So today I will want to say you know, just a few words about the design thinking. Actually, what is design thinking and how it works? Does it really work? And uh, what's the state of play according to Poland? Uh, so what is design thinking? Uh, in 1969, Herbert Simon says that design can be a way of thinking and the design is uh, too important to be just leave it to the designers. And in 1986, Rolf Fast expanded to say that it's a method of creative action. And this man here, David Kelly, uh, is considered as a kind of father of design thinking. In 1991, together with his colleagues, he founded the first company commercial company which solved the problems using design thinking methodology and that company is called uh, IDEO he was CEO up to 2000 and uh, in 2004 he came back to the Stanford University and established the first school which teach students how to solve the problem using design thinking and it's a design school school of design Hassel Platner Institute of Design called D school and also this man as a beginning, as a he worked in a Airbus, was response for design this lavatory occupied site, which you can find in a Benning 747. If we can put it in one sentence, we can say that some methodology for creative and practical weak problem solving. And the two important things is that it has to be creative. So we use a non-linear, non-standard way of thinking to solve that problems and also practical because design thinking it's going into practice there's no design thinking if we cannot put it into practice and also a wicked problem wicked problem is in my opinion one of the hardest trans tr expression to be translated in polish so i will just stick to the examples to show you that so wicked problems are the problem which are at the beginning completely difficult or impossible to solve these are the problems that we don't have data what it's occurred and we don't know what it should be end. Like an example, traffic jams, like decrease of sales, like no customer in your shops, or queues in the public offices. So how it really works? At the beginning, if you want to start solving, we need to answer a few questions because not every kind of problem can be solved by the design thinking. And the first one is, is the problem focused on the human values? So is our problem focused on the end user of that? Second, is wicked, so it's difficult to solve or even impossible? Or it has a high level of uncertainty, so we don't know what the solution will be at the end. And the final question, that we have no data at all, or we have some data, but we don't know which of them will be relevant. But design thinking, it's not only uh, developing a new product, it's also uh, uh, developing a new user experience. It's to changing the products according to the trends, economical, ecological, and even social. So it's going through the market without what your clients really want to have. And this is how it looks like on the, on the most basic uh, way. The first step is the empathy. So we're going out to the streets, and we're asking people what they really want. We're asking what's their pain. And, uh, and we, when we collect this information to the interviews, we go to the define stage and we, by gathering this information, answer the question what they really want. And the next stage, we gather as many possible ideas to find that one, two, or three the best solution. And that solution we transform into prototypes. And after that, we, you, we take these prototypes and going back to the street again to, say, to, to see uh, do we have right or not. So I'll just tell you briefly about each of the steps. The first one is empathy and why empathy is so important in the design thinking. Uh, firstly, because we need to know what our target group really wants. Most of the entrepreneurs said that or, or think that they know everything about their clients. And uh, we need to check that, actually, to go to the streets and ask the people what they really want. Secondly, it's also important because mostly problems which we are solving through the design thinking, it's not actually our problems. So we need to go to the uh, group 
and say and uh, took the information straight from the source. And the most important thing for me in the Enfante is that every one of us have some kind of filter which truces reality. And Enfante removes that filter. An example, if I can ask you about your first impression about the cereal. Some of you said that it's a valuable breakfast. Some of you will say that it's a lot of sugar in it. If I ask you the same question according to the energy drinks, some of you will say that it's a pure chemistry and it's bad for your health. While someone can say that's actually a good energy if you have a long day. So we all have filters. And the empathy in this stage, we do not interpret the data which came from our target group. We just collect it. And after that, we go to the define. So we are taking this information and put it all on the whiteboard and really think what our target group wants. What's their pain? And we try at this stage to define or even redefine the problem. And I can give you a little story about that. A few, few years ago, a company called Parker, who is manufacturing you know, pens, ball pens, and fountain pens, got a big problem of the decrease of the sales. And they hire a consulting company and say, we don't know what's happening, and we need you to solve that. And after a few months of, uh, of working, the consulting group came back and said, we think we know the answer. But before we say, uh, what's, our, what's our proposition, uh, we can just ask you a few questions. So first question is, can your product be bought anywhere? In a grocery store? On a gas station? Or in a newsstand? No. If an example, the ink cartridge f uh, will, will run out, will I throw your pen out and buy a new one? No. And an example, if, uh, what, what are the feelings of the people who are using your products? If an example give your product to that person, it will be the same feeling that an example I will give a yellow big pen to him? No. So dear Parker, you are not manufacturing pens and, and ball pens and fountain pens. You actually manufacturing gifts because your target group perceive your product as a perfect gift. And after that, the Parker reinvented the, the whole packaging. Uh, so it goes through the very, very aggressive but very nice marketing, presenting its product as a, as a, as a very good gift, and also positioning in a different places, like an example, gift shops. And after that, the sales go up again. So here's a story about how to redefine the problem, actually, from the data from the market. Okay, the next step is the ideate. So when we know exactly what we are looking for, what we are working, we uh, search for a broadened uh, solution for that. It is commonly said that we need to have 50 or 60 ideas for the one problem uh, to find that one, two or three that can be transported to the prototypes. Uh, and in this, uh, at the, in this uh, stage, we go beyond rational thinking. We ask yourself a question, how this problem can be solved by the six old year boy? Or how can I solve this problem if I got a control of the forces of nature? But when we go that beyond rational thinking, it can lead us to that one or two great ideas which can be transported to the best solutions. And when we and 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 this stage, there's a two rules that needs to be fulfilled to get it done. First rule is visualize. Don't write. Draw, sketch, visualize, use uh, images and pictures because the pictures inspire you to the next pictures, to the next images, which also influence your brain. And the second rule is don't sit. Walk, crouch, jump, stretch, but do not sit. Uh, in the creative spaces, mm, like, like where you are visiting, there is no desk at all in most of them. Why? That's easy, kind. Because when we are moving, your blood flows faster, so you exonerate your brain. And which means that you can be more productive and more creative. That's why. 
So when we select one, two or three best solution, we go to the prototype phase. So we make a physical form of our solution. And the first thing that needs to be considered that it needs to be interactive. We do not show our prototype to the groups. We must give it to their hands and see what are the reactions uh, of the prototypes. And uh, it's a kind of a cheap failure. If we just see that we made a mistake in, I in the process, uh, in, uh, in the process, we can just came back and made a new, a new and uh, better prototype. And with that prototype, we go to the test phase. And in the test phase, we see what our target groups interact with the prototype, how it uh, how it looks like, and uh, how they perceive it. And most important thing, we don't defend our prototypes. If, for example, give a new kind of packaging to the person, and that person don't know how to open it. We cannot go and say, hey, that's easy. You just need to put it this and put it this to this. If user don't understand our prototype, we made a mistake. We need to write it down, came back, and see what we can do better. So what this is all about? So design thinking, it's mainly about this. So creating a product that your clients will love and also services. And I will just show you a few examples that it really works. First one, it's a company called Embrace, and it founded in 2008 by the Stanford graduates, which during studies got the challenge to find a solution to create a solution to prevent mortality of the premature infants in the third countries, like an example, Nepal. And what they did, the first idea was to create a chip incubator that can be put it in an example, a local hospital. And after that, they go to Nepal and start talking with some people. And uh, what the information they received that. In Nepal, they have an incubators, but rarely no one use it. And the second information was that the highest mortality it's on the rural areas, where there is no electricity at all. So they developed Embrace. They develop a sleeping bag that can be put in a hot water and accumulate, accumulate heat from that water up to four hours. So where there is an infant, we can put it inside and during that four hours we can safely transport it to the hospital that can be put it to the proper incubator. More of that. It can be sanitized very easy to put it on the 10 or 11 hours in that same hot water. So it can be used uh, uh, many times. And the price of that, it's $20. And that's also a nice idea how to reinvent the problem. And the second uh, company which I'd like to show you, it's a Sproutal. Sproutal is a company which is building uh, interactive teaching toys, especially for the kids that are that had a type 1 diabetes and they developed the Jerry the Bear so the friend of that kid which also have the same disease as you can see it's a bear they got an insulin pen they got a backpack with carbs and uh, by but not using the scare tactics they use fun to show that kid that they have a friend with the same disease and uh, by caring of that of that uh, friend they also care by themselves. And I would like to also show you uh, two uh, examples from the Polish market. The first one is a Browary Regionalne Łomża. And in 2008, uh, when they want to introduce the local, uh, local uh, brand to the national one, they see that uh, they want to distinguish from the, from the other uh, breweries. And they hire a company, Touch Ideas, from Warsaw which is talking to the people, talking to the hipsters in club and so on, and create a completely different strategy. The first one, that they got a little, little uh, bottle, which is called Bumblebee. After that, they also develop a different label with the traditional logo of Womja, but also with that, you know, gray paper, which is symbol of ecological thing. But they also developed a, some kind of a stand, which is mostly placed on the counter, and it's developed that, that these bottles which you see in here are on the height of my hand. So when I wait for the, for the counter, 
I just can take one bottle and say, okay, maybe I will try. I don't need to lower myself or, I don't know, go ups. It's on the height of my hand, so it's more accessible for me. And they also introduced to the Polish market the first fridge pack, which consists of the 10 bottles and it's and it's uh, designed that it's perfectly fit to the standards height of the shelves on your refrigerator. Uh, so you can just open a refrigerator, you detach the front, and you always have ten cold beers in a limited space. The second uh, example is a company Rainbow Tours, my one of the biggest Polish tour operator, which also uh, ask uh, Touch Ideas to create a special campaign to distinguish from the other operators but do not lower the price and what they uh, what they thought is the uh, campaign called the holiday for the curious so if you want if you buy one curious you have about 50 percent of the discount to the next country which is in a different uh, uh, part of the world so what we have now in Poland according to the design thinking uh, we have desert. Our market is like a desert. In Poland, it's a six or seven years when design thinking is present, so it's a very, very uh, big possibilities to gather that market. But what we have also that we have an examples. We have an examples from the different countries, uh, still gaining an example from Poland. But we got also learning material, so we should learn from the others, um, from the other countries too. And what we have also that we have a people who knows the methodology, and they are willing to help, and they want to also share that methodology with, especially SMEs. What we need, we all need to be more open. We need to be open to talk, talk with our customers, talk with our partners, talk to the people that are in the environment and share the knowledge, share the experience. If we don't like such service, say it. Also, we, want, we, we, we need to believe. We need to believe that the even paper or cardboard prototype can give us a valuable uh, information how our market looks like because in the other countries that's how it looks like really and we need to be more curious we need to be more curious about the services about the innovation that's our market we need to tweet our experiences we need to post it uh, post it our um, feelings about how it looks like because if the developer of the service don't know how it's our feelings, it won't change the service. Wha and when we need it, there's only one answer for that. We need it here and now, mm -hmm. because there will be another companies from abroad, and they will come here, took our ideas, and took the heart of our clients. And it should be our common goal to not let them do this. Thank you.